Jesus said, when you're expelled from one city, flee to another. One of our leaders said, we must follow the teachings of Jesus our master, no matter how hard it must be for us to leave our dearly beloved country. We must leave and try to live in another corner in accordance with our faith. Our Deej people have been migrating for centuries. Our story takes us back to many countries in Europe and today we live scattered throughout North and South America. As life became difficult as a result to persecution, insufficient land and pressures from the outside, our way of living was threatened. When we feel we have no future, we are searching for a way that provides for our children and families and preserve our way. When moving to Campeche, Bolivia, Argentina, we move to live in villages with other Diche, and we have our schools and it's easier to keep our ways. We continue to make decisions as a group. When we move to Ontario, Elmer, St. Catharines, or Linwood, we do not live in villages. We live scattered among non Diche, we do not hear Spanish, we don't see each other on a daily basis, and we do not use pesos. We are changing the way we make a living such as working in shops or in the fields. We are learning English. We feel safer on the wider roads in Ontario. Many of us do not wear Slovakian anymore and we all drive trucks or vans. Many of us would like to farm here in Ontario or own our own welding shop, but this is often not possible. Making decisions as a group is more difficult in Ontario and so we often make individual decisions about our way of living, such as where we work, where our children go to school and how we care for our families. One family in our community decided to have their daughter, Eva, continue her education beyond grade 8. My name is Eva Harder. I moved to Elmer from Mexico with my family in 2002 and we moved to Waterloo Region in 2004. I am 18 years old and the second youngest in my family. I have two sisters and one brother. My family and I continue to attend Carthage Old Colony Mennonite Church. From grade 1 to 8, I went to school at Wellesley Public School. I enjoyed school and learning how to read and write. It wasn't always easy, but it has been very helpful. I remember not being a very strong student, but my grades improved as I went along. Miss Herget was my grade 8 teacher, and she really made learning fun. Because of her, I would look forward to school every day. In grade 8, I had to choose which school program to attend, and ULEARN was the better fit for me. ULEARN allowed me to work during the day and stay home to learn to cook and bake with my mom. There were challenges like having to wait a week to ask for help, but being able to work on schoolwork when I had time at home was nice. In grade 10, I bought a cell phone and was able to ask teachers questions by text message. That was very helpful. I do remember in grade 11 struggling feeling like I wasn't getting anything done, and I even had thoughts of dropping out. My parents encouraged me to keep going. They said, you came this far, you might as well finish. My brother and sister also said the same thing. They regretted not finishing high school. I kept going because I felt it was something important for me to do, and I'm glad I did. I hope that my younger sister also chooses to get her diploma too. Here in Ontario, parents from our Deech community are choosing to learn English. This helps us to care for our families. Yeah, Hello, Anna. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, congratulations to your new baby. Thank you. Good. Um, and how is everybody adjusting? Pretty good. Good. She's sleeping better now. 
Very good. Wonderful. And so how's Lisa doing? Because I know I saw her a couple of weeks ago for an ear infection on her left side. Is she doing better? She's doing better. Good. She looks well. Yeah. Um, no fever anymore. Not anymore. And she finished all her 10 days of antibiotics. Yes, I give her all the medicine. She finished. Very good. Um, is she eating and drinking well? Yes, she's eating well and she's sleeping and drinking well too. Yeah. Perfect. And she's obviously playing well. She looks very happy. So that's wonderful. So maybe if you can pop back on your nap, I'll just look in her ear to make sure it's healing well. Okay. Lisa, do you want to sit up on Mama's lap? Lisa. Lisa, have enough. I'm with you tonight. Come. Here. Okay. You just snuggle in, and I'm going to have a little look. Oh, it looks nice. Very good. And now let's turn this way so I can look in the other ear. We'll just turn your legs a little bit this way. That's a good job. Very good. Snuggle in. And this ear is good. It's great. It's pink. It's shiny. Much better. Your ear is much better. Good job. So, um, no more treatment is needed for the ear. So that's really great. Gave all the antibiotics, followed the instructions. She should be fine now. But if you have any concerns, you're worried about anything, you can certainly always bring her back. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions or? No. Good now. I should be okay if I do. I will call you. Okay, that sounds good. Good job. Okay, so I can walk you back downstairs. I'd like to share my story. Like others, I too have worked a journey of decision and choice to build my life in Ontario. My name is Peter Wall. I was 26 years old when I came to Canada. Two weeks after arriving in Canada, I started working at Earl Horse Systems in Elmira, Ontario. During the first three years of working at Horst, I learned enough English to get by and I began dreaming of working as a mechanic. I quickly learned that I had to go back to school to get my GED before I could get my mechanic license. So I began to go to an adult learning center every Saturday from 9 to 3 for the next three years and got my GED. After completing my GED, I learned that I could speed up the process by not doing an apprenticeship and that there was actually a way around that by going through the trade equivalency assessment process. I had to prove and provide the paperwork that I had many years of experience working as an auto mechanic. I submitted all the required paperwork along with the application. Two months later, I got a letter saying that I had enough experience, that I didn't need to do an apprenticeship, and that I could go ahead and write the exam for my mechanics license. One month after I wrote the exam, I received a letter saying that in fact, I had passed the exam. About a week after that, on my way home from a meeting at the Old Colony Church in Drayton, where I attend, drove through Moorfield and noticed a for sale sign in the window of a shop that I had thought would be perfect to start my business. I immediately called my brother who also shared my dream of working as a mechanic and asked if he wanted to join and make an offer. He said yes and we both scraped all our money together and made an offer. A few days later they accepted the offer and the shop was ours. Still working full time at my job I worked day and night, six days a week for a couple of weeks until my brother and I got the shop ready. Once we opened our shop, we started fixing cars part time. It didn't take long for the word to spread and we got busier at the shop. We began working late every night and weekends to meet the demand. We did that for a while until we couldn't keep up with the demand. I quit my job and began to work full time at the shop, while my brother helps out part time as he is now working on getting certified. Our Dutch people here in Ontario face difficult choices. We have opportunities to learn English, to care for our families, and to find good and safe work. Remembering the words of our leaders, we can live in accordance with our faith here in Ontario. What's your story of living in Ontario? 